Wow. Full time at Crow Park, Dublin, 113, Armagh, 215. The National Football League is back. The GA is back. But unfortunately, Dublin are not back. They've been beaten at Crow Park by Armagh by five points. And you know what? Armagh were fully deserving of the victory today. They were absolutely fantastic from start to finish. I mean, they destroyed Dublin, really. I mean, this wasn't even much of a contest. In the first half, Armagh completely running away with the game beyond belief in many ways as a Dublin fan. You're watching on and you're thinking, Jesus, mother of God. I mean, this was absolutely useless by Dublin in the first half. It really, really was. It was absolutely horrendous at times. Like, we'd no, no strategy to try and win that game at all. It was just get the ball and, and hand pass it around and try to run, run it through the middle. No, not much kick passing at all. And when we did kick pass, it was sluggish. It was poor passing. You sloppy wides. I think 14 wides in total in this game from a, from a Dublin point of view. Just at really, really poor. Really, really poor. But look, you have to give Armad a credit because, um, you know, Kieran McGinney came with a game plan. He, he'd obviously done his homework on Dublin over the past couple of years. He'd watched them quite a lot in, in the O'Byrne Cup. And, uh, you know, they were set up very well um, at the back. They didn't, you know, they limited Dublin in terms of much opportunities running through and, and going for goals. But, and and on the counter-attack, they were just absolutely brilliant. I mean, the long the long pass into Rian O'Neill was just absolutely exceptional. And they broke with pace. And, you know, watching that game as a Dublin fan, it almost reminded me of me 2010. It was like Mead or Armagh were just running through time and time again. And you felt like, Jesus, there's probably going to be two or three goals in this, you know, two, three, four goals in this half for Armagh. They were absolutely brilliant. Um, Rian O'Neill... You know, sometimes there's some people who say he's overrated. Some people say he's one of the best footballers in the country. And, you know, sometimes maybe there's always been a lot of hype about Rian O'Neill. And I feel like tonight was his coming out party. It really was because in Crow Park, under the lights, against the dubs, everyone's watching. He delivered. Absolutely, he delivered. 1-4 on the day. His goal was exceptional. You know, sent Evan Cummer for completely the wrong way. Put it to, to his left-hand side into the bottom corner. Some of his points were brilliant as well. His link-up play was exceptional. Jason Duffy was very impressive as well. Obviously, gets his goal as well. And um, they were saying in commentary at halftime that he probably didn't mean it. I think he did, personally, because you can kind of see at last minute, he sort of goes for the lob last second and Comerford was off his line. Um, and Armagh just played on the front foot. They attacked the dubs. You know, there wasn't much respect shown in this game, and there shouldn't be because... You know, you, I think the day of, of doing a Donegal in, in 2014 against Dublin or, you know, sitting sitting back and, and really trying to, I suppose, um, beat Dublin through a blanket defence, I think them days are over. I think you need to get at Dublin and, you know, you need to attack them. You need to give them problems. And Armagh did that in the first half. Like, they were set up well defensively, but they broke brilliantly with pace. And uh, they were clinical, absolutely clinical in the first half. I don't remember too many wides. And even in the second half late on as well, they didn't lose their composure, very level-headed, um, and they stuck to the game plan. And it worked hugely because, um, you know, Dublin, although they showed more urgency in the second half, they looked a little bit better in the second half. It was still nowhere near good enough uh, from a Dublin point of view, like just too many sloppy wides and shooting from ridiculous angles. And, um, you know, it was actually very reminiscent to extra time against Mayo when Dublin fell behind where they sort of, hit the panic button and sort of stopped doing what they were actually good at. Um, so, yeah, very strange from from a Dublin point of view. And look, I know it is the first game of the National Football League and maybe we shouldn't get too carried away. But, you know, this isn't a once-off from a Dublin point of view. These performances have been a regular occurrence, really. You know, against Leash in the O'Byrne Cup, you don't want to read too much into that, but at times quite sluggish in that. And having seen this performance now, you can kind of put both of them together. Mayo last year, especially in the second half and in extra time. Um, the league last year as well. Or not the league, sorry, the, the, the championship game against Mead in the second half. So for whatever reason, there seems to be this sort of self-destruct button within Dublin and we seem to just run out of ideas completely, which is absolutely baffling because we know this team has more than enough experience really to come through these kind of games and turn these kind of games around. You know, I often look back to Mayo 2019, Dublin were, I think, three, four points down at half time, came out in the second half and absolutely blew them away. You know, and that doesn't seem to be, you know, that doesn't seem to be on the case uh, at the minute. Like, yeah, just, you know, really poor. Like, you have to give Armagh credit for the way they played in the first half and even in the second half as well. Like, um, even in midfield, the likes of Mackett and, and Ben Creeley, 
Uh, ben Creeley in the first half obviously was was exceptional. Connor Mackin as well, very good from from that wing back position. Aiden Forker, some brilliant passes at different times in the game. Um, and like our mass for, forward line, like Rory Grugan, four points. He's been a player who's been delivering for Armagh for the last couple of years, and he was very impressive. Aiden Nugent as well. Uh, Tiernan and Kelly with a point, and you know they still have other players to come in there, like Connor Turba, Ross McQuillan, who didn't even come off the bench. So you know Armagh are looking pretty good for this year. And look, it is the opening national football league game, and you know you don't want to start um, brandishing teams, all Ireland contenders or whatever. But you know they're looking very, very good. But Dublin were just absolutely horrendous in the first half. You know it was like. They couldn't kick their way through a paper bag in the first half. They really yeah. couldn't. And at times with the ball, it was like they were trying to run through a cement truck or something. Like it was just so sluggish, poor. Um, it really, really was. There's a comment there from um Caden O'Mahony who said Tralee next week could be ugly for us. And that's exactly the point because Kerry next week, Mayo the week after, I think after that it's killed there as match day four, but then thrown away match day five. So you're looking at it and you're thinking. I don't think we turn it around and be Kerry. Uh, I really don't. Like I think Dublin have more than enough quality within their players to be Kerry, but I think playing like that, like it, it was just so sluggish uh, in the first half. Cormac Costello was probably the only player I thought in the first half who played quite well and um, took his chances quite well and, and kicked a couple of brilliant scores. But he obviously goes off injured. Sean Bugler goes off injured as well. Like it, weird as well. Like two players uh, going off injured in the first half, um, which was just. You know, well, you know, I'm not too sure whether that was a training issue or what it was, but it almost looked like Dublin hadn't prepared adequately for this game. And even in the first half, like, I don't know if it was arrogance or what it was, if, if Dublin felt like maybe they could just turn up and, and, and squeeze through our man, beat them maybe by two or three points without playing particularly brilliant. I don't know. I'm not sure. Maybe they had their eyes on Kerry next week. I really don't know. But uh, Sean Murphy says uh, Dublin seemed to have lost a lot of confidence. Hopefully we'll start to see Sam move around the country a bit more in the coming years as the championship becomes more competitive at the top. Yeah, I get what you mean um, in terms of Sam Maguire moving around. Obviously, as a Dublin fan, I can't quite agree with that. But I suppose from a neutral point of view, I completely understand that. And to be honest with you, like, I mean, it is the first game, so you don't want to get carried away or whatever. But Jesus, Dublin have a lot of work to do. They really do. Big game versus Kerry next week. Maybe those will improve for that. Need to, especially if Kerry get momentum. Yeah, like just looking through Dublin's team again there, like just, um, yeah, there was just a lot of like underwhelming performances. Like Kieran Kilkenny was all right in the second half, but didn't really show his all star form from last year. Ryan Baskell just didn't do it for me, unfortunately. You know, he's he's got a couple of opportunities from starting now and he's done very well with Bally Bowden St. Enders, but I don't know. It just wasn't really good enough from from him, unfortunately. Aaron Byrne, he obviously went off injured on, on the 15th minute, so it wasn't Sean Bugler. My apologies there. And all Scully as well. Like I remember he missed a, a mark, I think, early in the second half. And look, we know all these players are extremely talented, like Scully, Baskell, you know, Sean Bugler, Kieran Kilkenny. And we know they'll certainly improve and get better. But yeah, in the first half, it, it just wasn't it wasn't quite there. And defensively as well, like, yeah, just just not good enough, unfortunately. Nowhere near good enough. And, um, you know, is is Tom Lahiff a, a wing back? I don't know if he is. I think he's more of a midfielder. So, um, yeah, you know, weird, weird performances. And looking at the bench as well, like, it was good to see Lorcan Odell come on and score 1 1. Like, obviously, a young player coming through the, the ranks at the minute. Dean Rock hit three points. But, yeah, as a few people have said there, like, yeah, the, the day definitely belongs to, to Rion and O'Neill because, as I said, at the start of the video, like, you know, this was really his coming out party in many ways. Like, we all know the talent that he is and, and the player that he is, but, you know, today, tonight he really did deliver and he really did stand up, and um, especially with some of our mass players as well. Some of other players in there, like Rory Grugan and um, Connor Turber, Ross McQuillan potentially to, to come on as well. You know, I'm telling you, they, they, they have a real... Uh, they have a real chance of just being a surprise package. I'm not saying they're going to win at, win Ulster or win an all Ireland or anything like that, but they have they have the potential there. They have a lot of very good players who are all at a good age profile as well. Uh, Basquiat brothers are club players. Shouldn't be starting if we're serious about this year. Yeah, and like that was probably one of the things for for Desi. Like he's probably trying different things out to see. Okay, you know, like Con O'Callaghan isn't involved today. I don't know if it's an injury or what it is, but you know, we know what Con gives to the Dublin team. 
you know what Costello gives to the Dublin team, you know what Kilkenny gives to the team. He's probably looking at it and thinking, maybe is there, you know, can we get an extra 10 to 15%? Can we get Pascal into a bit of form? Can you get Aaron Byrne into a bit of form? Can you get some of these lads into a bit of form? And then maybe they might be able to uh, to kick on and, and, and maybe, you know, make a stake in the team or at least come off the bench or something like that, you know, more options from the bench. But yeah, it did back four. I mean, Cameron McCormick, I thought was all right. Like he kicked a good point in the, in the second half, but yeah, worrying, worrying times. Um, X1 says, can't wait to see what the Armagh team does this year. Yeah, like if you're an Armagh fan, you're absolutely buzzing with that. You know, um, I didn't think Armagh would get relegated from Division 1 anyway, but I thought they'd be there or thereabouts. I think, you know, if Armagh can put in some good performances like that at home and away, look, you're not going to, you're not going to perform like that every week for sure. And, you know, you're going to come up against some really good teams, but you know, the future looks good for our Matt. It really, really does. It really, really does. Very, very uh, impressive stuff and very impressive victory. So, um, yeah, great to have the Intercounty back. But, yeah, not so great from a Dublin point of view, unfortunately. And, um, yeah, I mean, in Dublin now, Kerry, Mayo, Tyrone, come, you know, just looming around the corner. Dublin could find themselves in a relegation battle. They really, really could. So, yeah, worry, worrying times there from a Dublin point of view. But look, it is early days, still the first National League game. You don't want to get too carried away because if Dublin were to turn things around and win in All-Ireland, no one's going to remember this game, obviously. You know, not not many people will. Maybe if you were there, you'll remember it. But, you know, if you're an Armagh fan, maybe you'll remember it. But from a Dublin point of view, I don't think you will. So we'll see what happens. But full credit to Armagh, fully deserve it of the victory. And um, yeah, cheers anyone who tuned into the stream. If you can leave a like and subscribe, I would appreciate it. And um, yeah, someone saying there, what's your predictions for tomorrow's games? Yeah, I did a podcast there a few days ago where we ran through those uh, a little bit in a little bit more detail. So if you want to check that out, you can. But um, yeah, we'll wrap this up here anyway. Cheers, anyone who tuned in. My name's Aaron. And uh, yeah, congratulations to where I'm at. Big victory for them. And I'll see you all with some reaction.